Candidate Candidate Spotlight. My name is Brandy Stankovic, and I would like to introduce you to Fritz McDonald. Welcome, Fritz. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited that you're here. Please give us an overview of your background. Tell us about you. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you guys for hosting this and having us out here. This is an amazing opportunity to speak to the residents and, and our constituents. Mm -hmm. So who is Fritz McDonald? Well, I was born and raised here in Boulder City. Uh, I'm a family man. Got a wonderful wife and a beautiful eight-month-old daughter, Claire. I'm a 10-year Army vet. I've led soldiers across these United States, around the world, and through Afghanistan. I own some small businesses here in town. I'm the owner and founder of McDonald Financial. And I serve this community through Rotary, through the VFW, as a commissioner on the Planning Commission, and through the Chamber. So a lot of folks ask me, um, you know, why did you come back after the Army? And why are you running for city council? Mm -hmm. And really it's because of my little Claire Bear. I want her to have the same opportunities that I had growing up. Mm -hmm. I want all the kids of Boulder City to see Boulder City the way that I do, mm -hmm. as a choice to bring your family back and raise your family, to play floor hockey there on the old wooden floor, getting your shins hint, to be doing an Eagle Scout project, to clean the shores of Lake Mead. Mm -hmm. I remember planting the trees down Veterans Memorial when that road was first had their ribbon cutting. And I don't want to lose that unique Boulder City to either side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does the job of a city council person look like to you? And why, how do you fit into that? Why are you a good candidate? Well, there's the duties and descriptions. I mean, most folks can go online and see what is a city council. You know, they're, they're our governing body and they enact uh, ordinances and orders and resolutions. They are in charge of the hiring and the accountability for the city manager, the city attorney, city clerk, and our municipal judge. They pass the annual budgets. Those are kind of all the, the broad strokes, actual things that they do. Mm -hmm. But really, when I look to the council and look to the mayor, I see a leader. Mm -hmm. I see someone that's leading this town. And so then we ask, what is the job of a leader? And really it breaks down to five functions. They create the climate and culture. Mm -hmm. They provide the vision. They provide the resources needed. Mm -hmm. They delegate. And then they hold folks accountable. It's pretty simple, you know, when you put it in those terms, the broad strokes of what they do. With that being said, the, the examples that I've got I was the hotel manager of a major Las Vegas Strip hotel casino. Mm -hmm. I had hundreds of employees, three different departments, three union contracts, multi-million dollar budget. Mm -hmm. We did those things. I was a company commander, led soldiers through Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You're directly responsible for that command climate. Delegation, accountability, resourcing, mm -hmm. providing the vision. I serve on the board of Rotary. Mm -hmm. We provide the vision. We do those things. So, and additionally, as a small business owner, you're the CFO, you're the CEO, you're the COO, you're the every officer that there is, mm -hmm. and you provide those things. So, I've not served on city council, mm -hmm. but I've got extensive experience in those qualities that are needed to hold that position, mm -hmm. and I, I'm a proven leader. Mm -hmm. And what about g getting the voice of the constituent, getting the voice of the community? Absolutely, uh, it's imperative. Mm -hmm. You know, we the city is on the right track, communication. But as most people will admit, communicating in any organization is never done. Mm -hmm. We've never hit the mark and said, okay, we can now communicate less. Mm -hmm. We can always improve. I've seen over the last six months our social media presence improve. Mm -hmm. We've seen outreach and workshops, whether they be interactive with the crowd mm -hmm. or come and be educated. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful ideas and we need to continue those. We've got our mayor that's going out in the town, mm -hmm. sitting in people's homes, invite your neighbors, communicate, let's, right. let's seek your input. 
But that last piece is the most important because we as a council are not here to lecture, Mm -hmm. educate, cut people off from public outcry. We're here to seek their input. Sure. That's what guides our town and should guide what we do as policy and procedure. Where does this, where do the residents see us in five years, 10 mm-hmm. years, 20 years? So it's important to communicate, but that communication needs to be a two-way street. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what is your vision then? You talked about five years and having that, that uh, dialogue. What's your vision for the, the city for f- in a five-year time frame? It's simple. Families, kids, retirees, businesses are enjoying the unique Boulder City life Mm -hmm. that we're enjoying today. We've got thriving businesses and a robust tourism market. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, reliable infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And we're fiscally sustainable. Mm -hmm. Um, One of my points for my vision is maintaining fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we've done that. We've done a great job of getting on track and getting out of debt. But the next step is to look at our sustainability. And so I don't think there's anything, and I don't know if there's a candidate out there that wants a dramatic change and a dramatic overhaul. We all talk about, you know, preserving the quality of life. Right. Well, I've got a true stake in that. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of these young families share in the belief that I do, that we want our kids to not only experience what we did, Mm -hmm. but hopefully pass that on to future generations. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So what are your top priorities then as we head into the future? What do you believe are the priorities for you and the city? We've got to update the master plan. You know, growth is the hot topic issue right now, and rightfully so. We are looking at a divisive issue. Mm -hmm. Folks want to either grow, not grow, some growth over here. Wait, these size homes, these size lots. There are so many different ideas, and people are very passionate about this. Mm -hmm. Well, the root of this division is the fact that we don't have an updated master plan. We don't have this strategic document that's supposed to be updated every 10 years. It's already 15, 17 years past due. Mm -hmm. That would answer all those questions. It would tell us how to continue to grow. And I understand the argument why it wasn't updated. Mm -hmm. We went through a tough financial crisis. We were not growing. Mm -hmm. And we had different priorities that were a little bit higher. But now that we're talking growth, it's time to go back and update that. Mm -hmm. It'd be like me trying to run my business without a budget. Can we buy this program? Can we do this? I don't know. Let's write the check and just see if it works out. I mean, that's crazy. It'd be like trying to run a military operation. Who's the enemy? Where are they? How long do we need to pack for? What? I don't know. Let's just go out and see what happens. <laughs> that's how we're approaching growth. Mm-hmm. We don't have this strategic document. You know, after the first time of going out on the campaign trail and talking about this master plan and updating it, a lot of the other candidates found that, hey, this is resonating with candidates. I think we'll adopt that into our platform as well. So the follow-on question, because once again, we talk broad strokes, but the follow-on question is, okay, we update the document. Then what? Mm -hmm. What are some of the root problems that we're seeing? We've got to make it attractive for competition amongst developers. Mm -hmm. We've got one developer in town. Why is that? Let's identify that issue Mm -hmm. and resolve it. Mm -hmm. We say we want to attract young families here. Well, why are young families having an issue coming into town? Why are they not coming into town? Mm -hmm. Let's identify those issues. You know, we've heard the scary statistics about the schools, the numbers. Um, Unfortunately, some folks don't don't want to recognize them as truth. Mm So I go to the source. I've sat personally with all four principals. Mm -hmm. What are your real numbers? What are the issues? And it is alarming. It absolutely is alarming. And whenever I talk about growth, we're talking doing all of this within the framework of the growth ordinance. I don't think there's a candidate out there that is saying we need to go crazy. I think we can all agree that the growth ordinance has done well by our city. And we continue to do that 
within the growth ordinance. Mm -hmm. But when we're talking about this, you have to think about the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. The second best time is today. Mm -hmm. We can't continue to kick the can down the road and just have our blinders on. So that's priority one. A little long-winded, but priority one. Right. Priority two is we need to focus our tourism mm -hmm. on our history, mm -hmm. on our businesses, and our recreation. Mm -hmm. We've got the bypass coming in. And if we don't start strategically planning for this, rather than just good ideas here and there, but truly strategically planning for this, mm -hmm. it's going to be here before we know it. Mm -hmm. There was a study done recently that the uh, visitors for the Hoover Dam, 80% of them did not understand and connect Boulder City as the town that built the dam. Hmm. That's a huge disconnect. Mm -hmm. We need to bridge that gap. The Reclamation has been a wonderful partner of ours for decades. Mm -hmm. we, we, we love working with them, they love working with us, but you go down to the dam and there's pictures of Old Town Boulder City. But you go with the tour guide and you can go and rub the feet of the statues, go over to the spillway, but they don't bring you up to Boulder City. They don't show you our history. We're part of that story. The second part of that was businesses. We've got to drive folks into business, and that ties directly with our recreation, our third piece. We've got more recreational things to offer than a lot of our sister cities. Sedona's beautiful. A lot of folks have tried to compare us to Sedona. It's beautiful, but we got more to offer. Mm -hmm. People want to jump out of airplanes, fly in helicopters, ride bikes, zip lines, water stuff. We've got more to do. There's folks that are going to be passing on the freeway that have an extra hour before their check-in. Mm -hmm. Come on in, ride a bike. Mm -hmm. Hop on a paddleboard. There's also people living in Southern Nevada that we can bring out here. You know, the same folks that attend our worst fests. Bring them out here. But there's really an untapped market that nobody else is talking about. And that's the international and national tourists mm. that are in, in, in Vegas. They come to the Strip. And it sparked because I was on a Segway tour of old Fremont. And we were there with somebody who was out here for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And they were done with the smoking, the drinking, the gambling, the shows, all that is Vegas. Mm -hmm. And they needed to get away. They were talking about the Grand Canyon and Red Rock. Mm -hmm. I said, what about Boulder City? What do you mean, Boulder City? Well, that is a market that we can attract. Mm -hmm. Get away for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. We've got some wonderful hotels. Sure. We've got championship barbecue. We've got wonderful burgers. Have a beer. Have some wine. Right. Eat at our diner. Participate in our recreation. Mm -hmm. We've got a council that's starting to work on this, but we've got about six different entities mm -hmm. that deal with tourism and different parts and different markets. Right. We need to consolidate our resources. Mm -hmm. And the last priority we talked just briefly before is maintaining fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. But we've, in doing so, we've got to t look at becoming fiscally sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, having the solar leases and the golf course leases and our other land leases, we have an amazing opportunity that brings in revenue. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to raise property taxes. We don't have to sell land. We don't have to grow just in order to sustain. Mm -hmm. But what are we planning for? I've spoken with our city manager. I've spoken with our community developer. I've spoken with our CFO. I've spoken with these people. What's our plan? What's our course of action? If in 20 years, those solar leases don't find it advantageous to stay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they fund our general fund and our general fund, 80% is benefits and salaries. I mean, we're setting ourselves up like the Clark County School District did by tie tying their budget to the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. Well, we saw what happened when the gaming industry crashed and went down. And mm -hmm. you know, my wife's a third grade teacher. You have your budget stripped. Schools lose teachers' programs immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm not okay with tying that directly to and just saying, well, I hope those solar guys stay out there. They're really nice to have. Mm -hmm. I come from a background of strategic planning and knowing, okay, what's course of action A, B, and C mm -hmm. if things happen? Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. That's a good like, overview of all of your priorities. And so this next question, really, I know that you've answered a lot of it in specific, you know, in, in detail, but how would you make Boulder City a better place? 
Well, I think to a uh, a series that we're doing in church right now mm-hmm. at the Christian Center, and it's it's a series all about a servant leader. Mm-hmm. And everything that I've done in every position that I've held, in every business I've owned, through the military, growing up as an Eagle Scout, it's being a servant leader. Mm-hmm. It's being out in front and serving with the people, serving the people and leading them in that way. Um, having the convictions to do what's right for Boulder City. Mm-hmm. And I think back to what my dad always used to tell me. My dad growing up, and I think it started probably about fifth grade, so I can remember. And he was, used to always turn to me and say, Fritz, remember rule 13 and rule 14. And these were leadership rules from General Norman Schwarzkopf. <laughs> And he never had to explain, you know, what they were. He never had to give me that long parental speech before you went out bowling with friends, before you went off to college, before you joined the army. You know, he just would look to me as a man and look me in the eyes and say, remember rule 13 and rule 14. And they've driven me in everything that I do in life. Mm -hmm. Rule 13 and 14 is do the right thing. And when put in a leadership position, lead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They sound really simple, but they're extremely dynamic and they just, they're my mantra and it's what drives me every day and no matter what I do. So we have a lot to contribute, Mm -hmm. but we've contributed a lot already. Um, Like I said, I serve this community early on. Mm -hmm. I've... I've done those things and I've served our country and I've served our community. Mm-hmm. And so really that ties into this kind of final question of bringing it all together. Why should the city vote for you? I'm the best candidate. Mm-hmm. Um, I pride myself on being the people's candidate. Mm-hmm. I've got representatives and endorsements from businesses Families, retirees, teachers, firefighters, vets. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we go out and when we knock doors and look people in the eyes and shake their hand. I've had very few conversations end with without offering. How can I get a sign? I don't have any money, Fritz, but here's $20 because I believe in your vision. I believe you're the right man for the job. I'm a proven leader. I've got a track record of success. I've got the qualifications that have led to and embody that of which you would describe a city councilman. Um, I bring a strong financial background. Uh, own a financial firm and uh, strategic planning. Mm -hmm. It's what I did for the military for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And finally, just as my slogan says, I'm a fresh candidate with a familiar face. (laughs) That was a great place to kind of bring it all together. Thank you very much for being a part of this process. We appreciate your time and you being here and providing more information to the community. Well, thank you so much. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. My name is Brandy Stankovic, and you just had the opportunity to watch the Candidate Spotlight, which was an informal discussion with the candidates in the upcoming election for City Council here in the city of Boulder City. All of the eight candidates had the opportunity, equal opportunity, to come be a part of this process. All of the filming and videos were done in one day, and they were all done live or done in one take. So to give you as much information about them, their background, their wants, their desires, and things they want to do to make Boulder City a better place. Our primary goal is to to give you as much information as possible. And everybody involved in this process and production is volunteering their time. So thank you for watching our videos and we hope you enjoy. 